Hey, what's going on my fellow Farmall brothers and sisters? All right, I've had a lot of questions and a lot of emails about this oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a video and give everybody pretty much all the details of this oven, how many years I've been using it, and maybe the knowledge to build your own. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back. So this oven I built in, I guess, 2017. Um, I wanted to build an oven big enough for me to do all of our Cerakote work and if I want to do some small powder coat work. Funny thing is, I started off with this oven. I bought this from Eastwood. Um, I was just going to use this for some of the stuff that I was going to do. And then certain things um, that I wanted to put in here wouldn't fit. So I decided, you know, I'm going to build an oven. I was going to build kind of a small one. Then I decided to get a little bigger. Then I went a little bigger. And I was like, all right, I don't want to go much bigger than that because, you know, I'm limited on height. So what I ended up finally coming out with was a four foot by four foot, um, seven and a half foot tall oven. Now that's the outside dimensions. Um, the inside dimensions usable space is about 38 um, deep, 41 wide, and it's 80 inches tall. Now that's like snug. So that's the exact size on the inside of this thing. Um, the outside, um, I can't remember what the gauge was, the steel or the galvanized metal that I used for this. Um, I think it was roughly about a sixteenth um, as far as the thickness, as you can see right there. Um, so anyway, so what I did was I worked this thing out to have enough sheets. Um, you know what, I could probably count the sheets up and tell you exactly how many sheets I used on here too. Yeah, give me a second, let me count this. All right, look at that. See, it wasn't really no time for you guys. <laughs> it just took me time to count. I think it was about nine sheets um, that I bought all together for this thing. Um, I did, when I laid this thing out, I did it so that way all my pieces, my cuts um, that I used for the sides, it would work out for the door um, as far as having excess to make the ends. Um, I will go ahead and post a bunch of pictures at the end of this video and I will kind of show a bunch of the pictures of how um, you know I laid this out because at the time when I built it I didn't do a video um, I wasn't doing YouTube stuff then so I really didn't see any need to do a video but anyway um, I'll do some pictures and that'll kind of give like the process and how I built this but I built it with the uh, metal stud construction um, everything's pop riveted and then when I did all my ends where I did all my bends everything and I joined things together I cut snipped bent the metal up riveted things together so everything was a real nice fit it's not all just butt joint it um this is a, is a convection oven um so what i opted to do was i didn't want a window on this thing and i didn't want um to always have to open the big door every time i wanted to go inside of here for hanging small parts so i went ahead and opted to build which i could probably give you the measurements when i find my tape measure hang on okay the small door that I built in here, right, 23 and a half it worked out by about 29 to 5 eighths, right? That's the size of the door. Now, the reason I did that, again, was because if I wanted to do small parts in here, I can open up the small door, hang my parts, come back out, close it kind of quickly, and then all my heat didn't escape all the time. I just set it up with nice little small latches, just enough to close it. Small hinges, which are, again, I said I'll try to give all the details. So these hinges are about two and a half inches, and they're only about one inch wide per flat. Um, so that's how I set up this for the door. I used just a regular little handle for it. You know, open up, it does not get hot at all. Um, now this right here, is what they consider tadpole seal. This is proper seal for ovens. Um, this has actually got like a thousand degree rating on this right here. So you don't want to go using um, the stick on shit. Um, I've seen people use like stick on oven seals and stuff and they'll put them on the door. Thing. You don't want to use that. I mean, if you get your oven at a 450 degrees, 500 degrees for uh, gassing out, you're going to burn up that uh, um, glue that's on there. Are you going to get a gummy or it's going to be, no, just don't do that. Go ahead and go with the proper oven seal. It doesn't cost that much. You can get it off Amazon. I'll post a picture showing what it is. 
Um, so that way you guys know what the seal is, but it's called Tadpole Seal. It's like Lava Rock or something. It's the company. Um, and all I did was rivet it. That's how I attached it on there. And again, this is going on six years using this. The seal is still just fine. The heat doesn't blow out here. It contains perfectly. No issues whatsoever. So if you would decide you want to do an oven, I would highly suggest doing like I did and building the small door in here. It definitely saves hanging small parts and not losing all your heat. Um, now on the big door, it was easier to get to when I didn't have all the stuff in the way. But anyway, it's just these throwover style latches. As you can see right here, and again, I will post, actually I was going to measure it, but I'll post the link, uh, a picture of it, of what these latches are. And that's all you do is just flip them up. They're fully adjustable, as you see here and here. i got to tighten these down a little bit. Um, but you can adjust these. So I have these set up. So latch it on, and it pulls just right to that uh, tadpole seal. You can crush the seal just enough. Now, when I open up the big door, same thing. I got that 1,000 degree tadpole seal going all around my door and sealing everything up. Um, as you see, two by four construction, all right? So just a standard, you know, three and a half inches wide, um, give or take, and then by the time you knock out the sheathing, shit like that, you know, that's the size of it. Um, this is all made with the steel studs and it's all rock wool insulation, all packed between here. So anybody knows rock wool is a little heavier than standard insulation. It's made for higher heat, um, which is why I opted to go on here, and it actually works very well. Now, obviously, when this oven hits, you know, 500 degrees, you know, you, you when, you know, the surface right here, you know, you'll feel a little bit. It won't burn you. It won't melt your skin to it. You'll feel it. You'll know, get your hand off of it. Um, but you're working around an oven, so you should kind of know not to be playing around it. Um, but as you see, I made the door completely, totally full size. So I have the biggest swinging door I could put on this thing. Um, gives me plenty of space. Now, what I was going to do, which I haven't done, which I may do now since I'm into powder coating more again, I'm going to build a rack system. That will actually slide up because I didn't want the metal on the floor. If I transport this or had to move this, I wanted the bottom frame just as thick as the sides, which makes it easier for laying down, maneuvering around, and I don't have to worry about buckling a piece of sheet metal for a floor. That's why I opted to go the stud thickness of a floor. But I'm going to make a rack system where I can roll the rack up to here, release the clamps, and then the secondary ramp will basically come off the dolly, roll right in my oven. I've seen them made before. Other people have done it. It's very easy. I've just never done it because I never really needed it. Um, but I might get to do that now because it's going to be easier for, um, for rims and stuff. Now I went ahead and I rivet in some, you know, one by one angle um, and just set it up where I could just sit this rack on here. I can slide it out when I don't want it. And I can leave it in for hanging parts. So that was actually very easy to weld up. Nothing special, very simple. Just fencing. Um, I've hung a lot of stuff off of here. I've hung exhaust manifolds. Um, I've hung rims off of here. Um, so far, this has held up quite well. Obviously, if you feel you're going to hang things heavier than that, something that's um, like, say, a wheel weight. Um, you put a 150-pound wheel weight on here, yeah, it might start bending this wire. So you might want to hang it on your channel right here. Um, but you can also weld this up with heavier metal if you want. Now I was doing a lot of small parts. So I went with this kind of, um, wire up here because it was easier for me to hang a whole bunch of pieces on it. You can ha you can weld a couple, you know, piece of rebar or something across there and give yourself plenty of hanging, you know, power if you're not hanging as much as I was hanging. I was going to make up a second one of these, um, with that setup just in case I wanted it. Um. So, no, I mean, all in all, it works good. I wanted to have enough distance here, too, for that convection to work. Um, as far as my heating elements, these are four 2,000-watt heating elements. Um, 2,000 watts will get this oven up to 500 degrees in about 25 minutes. And that's going from ice-cold, you know, sheet metal. Um, it'll actually get it up there pretty quickly, you know. Um, I could jump up to 3,000, 3,200 if I wanted to. My um, controller can handle it. I just haven't because um, it seems like this works fine. It doesn't suck a ton of energy where it's killing me on my electric bill. It gets the oven up to where I need be. Obviously, when I'm getting ready to start working on parts, I'll fire the oven up and I'll let it take its time and build up the heat. Once it builds the heat, it holds it. Um, Cerakoting, you only need 300 degrees. Um, sometimes you need less, depending on what you're coating. Powder coat, you want 400 degrees. Um, when you're gassing out, you want at least 450 um, because you want to go higher than your bake-out temperatures to get the gases out. This thing does the job quite well. Um, so 
I wanted my burners flush, as you see. So if I build a rack, I can make the rack full width and I can run that rack in here and it won't touch my burners. Um, you can mount your burners out on the surface if you want to, put your box on the surface, whatever you want to do. Um, this is your oven, you can build it however you want it. Um, I have the, uh, the basically the thermocoupler, I think they call it, um, for the control box right here. I'll put it in the middle um, so it catches that cross convection going across, gives me the best temperature reading in that center. Um, so far, again, this oven will pretty much keep consistent temperature all the way through. All four corners are pretty much damn near the same. The reason I did my cross this way, I wanted my blower on the bottom and I wanted the return on the top. Because what I want to do is I want to be able to suck things through, um, pull it down into there, blows, um, kind of the squirrel cage can catch like, um, I want to say if you get dog hair or something in there or whatever, it'll help catch it, recirculate back, goes up and through. Um, so far, you know, some people put the blower on the top and they put the vent on the bottom. I opted on mine to put the blower on the bottom, the vent on the top. Reason being is because I dealt in powder coat, um, the 32 foot oven that we used, we did it the same way. We ran all the squirrel cage blowers down low and we ran the blower up high. It always seemed to work quite well. Um, so I stuck with it and it works. And like, again, I did it. So it's like a cross, you know, breeze. I didn't want them in line with each other because then you could get a hot spot here. I wanted to eliminate hot spots for going that direction. Um, and again, you can get yourself powder coat hooks, um, things like that. I hung the extra rack on here in case I was doing like cups and stuff and I wanted to slide something on here or hang something else over here. I don't know, whatever. But again, that's just an oven rack. So once you set up this way, you can set up your oven any way you want it. Um, but again, it works very well. And as you see, like I said, I have no problem putting a nice big full size push-in rack in here. Um, let's see what else. My control box. This is I found my paper. This came from TC um, Coatings Unlimited, and they're actually in Pennsylvania. This control box can actually handle four 3200 watt elements with no problem. Um, so far, this box has been excellent. Again, I will post their picture. I will show the box that I'm using, um, where it came from. Now, I do have the option on here. Um, obviously, I can set this on a timer. I want it in analog style. I didn't want a digital. I can set this around for an hour, and it'll shut itself off. I have the light option on here. I decided not to put lights in my oven. I really didn't need a light in my oven. Um, I get plenty of light when you crack that door and you open it up. As you see, it's bright enough. And if I have to, I'll shine a flashlight in there. See what I need to see. So if you decide you want to put extra bells and whistles and put a light in yours, hey, by all means do it. Um, you can. And these control boxes come already set up to go ahead and do a light. Um, fan, that runs my convection. Power it up. I set your controller. Give it a second to set. I have it set at 385, which puts me at a 400 degree temperature. Um, if you want to change it, all you do is press over here. You'll see it give like a funny kind of flash. And then you adjust it up, adjust it down, wherever you want it. When you're done, you press it again. Boom, it's set. Now that'll work itself up. Kick your connection on. Good to go. Timer. You can set it to automatic if you're not using the timer, but if you are using the timer, go ahead and set that around. And oh my god, it's like I hardly ever use this. So just that go there. And boom, done. Here a click, shut off. Very simple. You do not have need a super complex box. Um, anything crazy. Um, as far as wiring, I went with all high heat wiring on this thing because the fact if I have the wiring going down, running in, and then it goes to the elements, and I want a high heat wire to go through the elements on the bottom. Um, I did space this away from the wall to give that little bit of air space. You want to make sure you do that. You don't want to have this thing flat up against the wall and put extra heat inside this box. It's unnecessary. I did stuff and pack a lot more rock wool in this area just to help you know keep that control box cool and again almost six years no problems whatsoever let's uh, see over here the reason i went ahead and left my blower open i got it packed with rock wool but i decided to leave that open now i could build a box to go around it if i wanted to again it's aesthetics it's in the corner you really don't see it i could build a box to cover it i may in the future when i move this out to my other shop um, once i build it but right now it's been fine 
and I went ahead and just basically clamped this one to the ductwork, which holds the blower, the squirrel cage on there. If anything ever happens to this blower, all you do is unclip this, unplug the wires, pour it right out. Done deal. I made it very simple, very easy to work on if I have to. I have an extra blower for this actually up in the ceiling. I bought it a couple years ago because it seemed like something was going on, like something wasn't acting right. And it wasn't. Just something bumped the wire, knocked it off, and that was it. Somebody squeezed back here. Um, but again, I made this very easy to maintenance. So, no issues whatsoever. Um, I think that's really about it, honestly, guys. Um, again, this thing has hit 500 degrees, easy as can be. Haven't had a single issue out of it whatsoever. Um, I think that's really about it. The only thing I guess I didn't give you was the measurements on the hinges on the main door. I ran three of them. One, two, and three. And these hinges are three and a half inch hinges. And they're like an inch and a half wide. So, again, like I said, everything is very simple. Everything is riveted. Everything is sealed pretty good. Um, I really don't have any issues out of this thing. Um, I couldn't be happier with this oven. I think at the time when I built this oven, with the metal, the control box, the elements, everything, I may have had, I don't know, maybe uh, 1800 bucks, and I, that might be at the high side. I've had 1800 hours, I think it cost me to build this oven. If you were to buy an oven this size, this would cost you 10 grand. Um, so it's not that hard. This was my first big oven that I built myself complete. Um, I helped work on the other ovens at the powder coat shop, but this is my first big one that I built and couldn't be any happier with it. If I ever decide to uh, expand this oven out, it's very simple. All I gotta do is remove the door and basically build another frame, add a few more <laughs> uh, pieces of metal to it. I can always pop in, you know, two more 2000 watt elements if I want to. Boom, I got a bigger oven. I can expand right onto this thing, no problem whatsoever. So, I'm just saying, um, you guys shouldn't be intimidated to go ahead and make your own oven. It's actually not that hard, it's actually pretty simple. Um, just take your time. It's, um, I mean, they're heavy when you get them done. So, I may go ahead and end up adding a, uh, basically a little um, cart to go underneath this oven with some wheels. So when it's in the other garage, um, once I build it in the higher ceilings, if I ever had to move it around, it's easier to move. In here, I didn't go with wheels because as I said, kind of limited space so i couldn't do it so anyway um and also the big must for ovens i would say have yourself some good loud timers again amazon get your timers um everything's set up for different times depending what you're doing it's good to have multiple timers um i set these up with extra magnets so it spaces them off the door just a little bit um and i always keep myself a little dry erase board it's always good to have all your numbers on there um just in case you want to change something or tweak something. You know, have all your times, have all your oven numbers down there. So that's it from me talking. So make sure you continue watching and then you'll see some of the pictures of the build. And then I'll put some of the pictures as far as the parts that were used. And hopefully it'll help you guys build your own oven. Other than that, that's it for today. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share. It's always appreciated. Definitely hit that notification bell. And... I always appreciate when you guys tell your friends about my channel and get me more subscribers. It helps me stay in the algorithm of everybody and keeps my videos moving. But make sure you guys stay tuned because I am going to show a video, boom, of that Super Ray finishing up the powder coating on those back wheels. Um, I'm going to get ready to powder coat them this weekend and this thing will be done and I'll be pulling it out and you guys can see those nice pretty wheels in that Super Ray. So again, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Until next time.